Good evening, and it's Christmas Eve, and guess who I have here for you? It's Casper. He's decided that he wants to come along and be with us this Christmas Eve. So I want to tell you about the talk. Tickets will be available from Eventbrite, and they'll also be available at the door. They cost six pounds and a link to Eventbrite will be below this video. You'll be pleased to hear that any profits we make will be given to our local hospice St Christopher's. The talk which we're going to have at uh, Dulwich Village Church Hall on the 22nd of February. Uh, doors will be open at 6.30 and we'll start after that, I think about 6.45, something like that. The cost will be £6. And the aim of the evening is for me to give you a short talk. And then, most important, for you who have stories, to be able to tell them. So that everybody can listen to them and hear them. And then, uh, obviously, there'll be lots of times questions. So uh, I'm looking forward very much to seeing those of you who can manage to come. And uh, the evening, I think, will probably stop at somewhere around 8 o'clock. So, happy Christmas to you all. So this evening's talk... I'm going to do on slides and I'd like a feedback from you as to whether you find the slides just distracting or whether the slides make everything too complex. Uh, so if you prefer me just to talk about it without slides, I'm very happy to do that. But this one is slightly more complex than the usual ones because I want to actually show you some graphs. Uh, from a colleague of mine called Monica Rentz who works in as a palliative care theologian in Zurich and she's produced this data which is very convincing about the actual dying process and the experiences of the dying and also it's where I get my word from when you die just be curious now you'll know why I say this when you see what her data shows. So don't forget to feedback on whether you prefer it with or without slides. Okay, thanks very much. So we'll now go into the talk. Now we can go straight on to the slides and, and we'll do the talk. You will remember this slide. It was one of our first ones, uh, starting with premonitions uh, deathbed visions, uh, the journey we go on, the new reality we may go into, till finally we come to the time of death itself. Now at that time there are interesting things which occur, for example deathbed coincidences which we haven't discussed, and then clocks, animals, bells, lights and shapes leaving the body. Now we're going to need a good scientific explanation for all these phenomena. you remember that uh, as we come up to death itself, our consciousness changes. And last time we were looking at non-dual consciousness or um, the fact that the ego structures have gone, do you remember with the clearing and the cleaning, the attachments, that all goes. And with that, our personal sense of I we we have an expansion of consciousness and become more cosmic. So I'm going to look at this whole process in much more detail. Now this is a book, it's a recent book by Alan Kelleher who is the professor of uh, palliative care in Leeds University or he was, I know he was going to move, I don't know if he has yet. Um, from 2014 and this book is one of the first books to recount the experience of facing death slow solely from the dying person's point of view. This is really surprising 
lots and lots and lots of learned papers published on what happens to the body, but what is going on in consciousness has been an area which has been almost totally neglected. And I wanted to take you just down to the bottom of this slide, um, uh, because what Kelleher shows us is that along with suffering, loss, anger, sadness, and fear, we can also feel courage, love, hope, reminiscence, transcendence, that's what we've been talking about, and transformation, and even happiness as we die. So it looks as if this whole idea of death being an expansion is coming into the literature. Now another paper has just been published by Dr. Wallian uh, in 2016, and he talks about, about again, the experiences of the dying. And I want to, to just stress what he says. The last hours of life are not easily explained within a traditional medical model. If you say that it's all just brain function, then of course you won't really get anywhere. The most consistent caregivers, nurses, assess, recognize, and value the experience of the individual who's dying. So then, where is this new data coming from? It's coming from, uh, there's Casper who's wanting to go. It's coming from a palliative care theologian called Monica Rentz, and she works in a hospital in Zurich. And she has done a most amazing study. And uh, that paper that I've just shown you is one in which she gives the data that we're going to talk about now. She has done an 80 patient series with at least three observations a day, and she rates four dimensions. Now, this is hard work because three observations a day. Uh, and if you are doing a study and there are a number of people, is full-time job. And so, of course, she has a number of other doctors uh, and uh, palliative care nurses who help her. And the dimensions that she uh, discusses is those of fear, pain, denial, and spiritual experience. Now, we're interested in spiritual experience, obviously, Denial is the fact that you say that you're not going to die when, of course, you know you are, but in fact you're shutting it out. And that can be very painful uh, psychologically. And then there's physical pain, which is usually helped with morphine. And fear, because you don't want to go. So fear and denial are linked very closely. Spiritual experience and the expansion comes with the clearing. She's written a book on this called The Transitions. Uh, dying as a transition is certainly worth having a look at it. Now, she argues there are three phases in dying. In fact, really, we have covered these, but she covers this from a slightly different angle. She talks about pre-transition, transition, and post-transition. And so what does she mean? In pre-transition, the patients may feel needs, for example, uh, thirst and bonding. Uh, they may have that pain from their cancers and emotions. But remember, the pain from the cancers can be helped with uh, uh, morphine. And many fear losing control, their dignity, and realize dying is inevitable. And when you know that dying is inevitable, then the thing to do is to look forward to what is coming, but be curious, and I'll give you the data for that in a moment. Now, the things that can stop you moving forward uh, to the next stage is that you are locked in denial, not dying, so you never move on. 
You may think a lot about traumas that you've had in the past during your life and focus on those. Anxiety which arises from this. You may struggle, particularly against strong attachments, and please do listen to this, or unresolved family issues. Now, the resolution of family issues is absolutely crucial. And you may... Uh, or it may throw into prominence inside you your awareness of previous negative behavior. Now, this all has to be given up. We have a lovely story of the resolution of family conflicts. It's a man who uh, had a fierce row with his father at the age of 16, went down to London, got a job, and never spoke to his family again. So there was this huge unresolved conflict for both the father and the son. Then one day, he says, he uh, uh, woke up in the morning and instead of turning right to go to his work, he turned left to go to the station. He got into a train and took the train home. Now, he was just propelled to do this. And when he got home, his mother um, came running out to see him and said to him, I'm so pleased you're here um, because your father wanted, is dying and wanted to see you before he died. And he said, his father said, now that I've seen you and I can tell you that I love you, I can die, which is exactly what he did. So you must resolve family conflicts. And of course, awareness of any negative behavior may hold you back. Now, you can, in fact, be helped through this period by the hospice staff and support and the help, the help they can give you to find meaning uh, in, in your life and what's happened. Uh, will help you to move on. So there should be an interaction between you and the hospice staff at this point. Then you come to transition. It's a sort of no man's land, if you like, between uh, pre and post transition. Uh, but during it, you loosen the ego form of consciousness you have. Now, you know that you all are aware of that thing with inside you which is always chatting to you it's got a sense of I about it called by Jeffrey Martin the narrative self well your attachment to this loosens and in fact goes typically you may show uh, physical signs of anxiety and struggle although that's not so common and many patients simply stare or are rentless, restless and occasionally some of the old traumas may be reactivated but the main thing about this stage is that there's the loosening of your ego consciousness so you now come to post transition which is the spiritual opening this is where you get um, your cosmic awareness or cosmic consciousness dawning on you because the ego is not dominant anymore and you become non-dual so it's not you looking out at things you are everything and another name for the state of consciousness is non-symbolic uh, patients seem to be serene in a state of being beyond anxiety pain or powerlessness it's a it's a very tranquil quiet expanding stage just before you die most are unable to speak but can still hear do remember this uh, even though a person who's dying uh, may not be able to speak to you she can still hear she can still hear so go on talking reassuring tell them to continue being curious they communicate by gestures or single words and sometimes reconciliation, visions and peace are observed. So this word reconciliation is very important. Such transformative experiences may be comparable to a spiritual awakening or a patient who has completed the journey. 
So these are the very final stages, this expansion of consciousness before you actually die and you can no longer communicate what state you're in. So we've taken you right to the edge of, of dying itself. And remember that you have changed your level of consciousness. You're now non-dual. And that stage of consciousness is enormously important. Let's see what Monica Rentz uh, says how you go there. This is one of her patients. You'll see there are three divisions in this slide. The top one is pre-transition, transition in the middle, post-transition. At the bottom, each line uh, is made up of the three readings which um, you have. And um, these ones uh, is the overall level that the person has and so you can see they were in pre-transition for a lot then they quickly dipped into transition and then down into the expansion of consciousness from which they died now not everybody goes that way some people may go very rapidly into post-transition you can see that here and the uh the graph spends most time in post-transition, a little bit in transition, just dips back again into pre-transition, probably when more clearing is being done. And then finally, she ends up uh, in post-transition. So uh, the graph of how you progress will vary. Along the bottom, those figures are in fact days. So that the, this graph we're on lies one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's sort of in the two weeks before you actually die. Now, this is the most important uh, graph published by Monica Rentz, and it's so important that it's one of the main reasons why I wanted to do this talk with a graph. Now, you will see that the little uh, label on the graph, NDE, near-death experiences, meditation and mystical experiences, these all protect you from being anxious. Um, and they protect you because you are or have done some sort of clearing uh, before the death process. Now look at near-death experiences, that's 80% or 90% of people uh, don't suffer at all. Uh, the blue, I should say, is uh, suffering and the yellow is little suffering. So what we want to do is we all want to be in a yellow column. Um, these, that's why uh, having the NDE, which of course you can't order, um, but if you get it, you're lucky. Uh, you can learn to meditate. And mystical experiences, again, tend to be given to you. Now, the other ones which are interesting, I like to pray, is quite a high one. And the one right at the end, do you see it? Uh, it's quite high. And those are people who were curious. I'm curious about what's happening. So that then is in two thirds of people, that attitude is going to give a huge reduction in their anxiety about dying. Um, coming into the hospice with a positive attitude helps, but not nearly as much uh, uh, as being curious about it. So let me suggest that it's very, very important that this is in fact talked about and um, discussed so that people may have some understanding of what the death process is. You remember I talked about this lady from um, Canada who very kindly um, told me about what she did in her hospice and she in fact took the example of the near-death experience and showed 
the uh, showed the patients what the near-death experience has said the death process was like and it's very calming and helpful and supportive so then this final transition is the crumbling of our egoic consciousness and we move into subject object, subject object consciousness which transforms to non-symbolic consciousness they're the same thing really it's non-duality and as you become one with the universe all is felt as a divine unity so you can see we've covered a lot of ground in this talk and it may be that you would like bits of it uh, to be explained in more detail again uh, I'll probably go on uh, just to complete the dying process because you see I haven't yet talked about uh, all those things like uh, deathbed coincidences and I have talked about animals and and um, light and shapes and things like that because this all comes in the next talk but we couldn't get there until we understood that they arise when you have changed your level of consciousness when you are non-dual and in that level of consciousness you will find that uh, the world that you are experiencing everything is a unity and so it wouldn't be surprising then if there was some contact of some sort between you and the people who you are very closely mentally attached to emotionally attached to so uh, you can see now that we have this level of um, uh, of consciousness as we die then you would expect all those things that I put on the other side to occur or they may occur and indeed in some cases they do and uh, so what do, are we going to teach we're going to teach that there are end of life experiences and we're going to explain them you've had them explained to you you're way in front of the general population learn to give up attachments and heal family relationships I can't stress that enough particularly the heal family relationships and give up your attachments what's an attachment something how I wish I could see my children again that's an attachment no I've had these lovely children and we've had wonderful times together and that period is now over for me a number of mental attitudes and practices can help for example meditation and I've given some others to before and give confidence that 90 percent 90 percent approximately of conscious patients have positive transcendent experiences so don't be scared if you want to be anything be curious it is enough to look forward to death and be curious so there we have it we've been through the whole death process haven't described those uh, fascinating things that are brought on by this change of consciousness which we appear to go through but you have the whole panoply of the death process in front of you so uh, don't be afraid do be curious and um, we're now on Christmas Eve so have a wonderful time and in, uh, it just remains for me now to wish you again a very happy Christmas after Christmas in the uh, in the days before uh, New Year we'll probably finish death completely with an explanation of those events which are caused by in my view the change in consciousness that seems to occur okay thanks very much